Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sands of Vool. And in this video, to show off some features of hard ops and mesh machine, we're going to be creating a more interesting looking piston. Just before we start, I thought I'd mention I've been a bit ill recently, and because of that, my throat isn't great. So if there's some weird edit jumps or I sound a bit croaky, that's why. My apologies about that, but I'd rather have a video than not have one. And since the channel started a year and a half ago, I put two videos out a week, and I'd really like to keep that going. So we'll start with bringing in a cylinder, and just to make sure it's nice and smooth, we're going to put that up to 128 vertices. You could do that to what you want, but being that this is for 3D printing, I want it to be nice and smooth without shading it smooth. And then let's just S to scale that up a bit, and then S and Z to scale it on the Z axis to give our piston some length. And then we're going to control an A, and we're going to apply the scale. Otherwise, we can have some issues when we do certain bits, because it will do it more in one direction than the other. And we're going to have this piston going downwards, so that's where the piston is going to come out. And I'm just going to shift an A, and I'm going to bring in another cylinder there, keep the vertices the same, S that to scale that a bit, and then S and Z. And then we've got our piston coming out there, and we'll deal with this a little bit more later. And then, just to add the first bit of detailing, I want some trim around the bottom of this. So let's just go into edge mode, control and R, get that edge loop, bring it down to where we want. If we wanted this to be some specific thickness, if I just GG that all the way to the bottom, I could then just G and Z that up and do it to however much I want. For example, one would be there. Then I'm going to go into face mode, alt click, so we've got all of those, and then I'm just going to press Q and then go to in macro and hold down alt, and that's going to extrude these out along the normals, and it's a nice quick way of making those extra little bits of detail. Obviously you can do that without hard ops, but then you have to come over here, find your extrusion, go into that, extrude long normals, it just gets a bit tedious, it's much quicker with that Q menu. But that's a lot of what hard ops does. It does some things that you, well, quite frankly, can't do without it. But a lot of it are just things that is going to speed up your life. And for me, that makes it well worth that little cost. Now, the next one, again, you could do this without it, but it makes life much easier. We want to make this a little bit more interesting for where it would connect to our main object. So I'm going to cut out a little bit from the side here. So I'm going to shift an A and bring in a cube. And then let's move that somewhere there. S, scale it up so we've got something about the right size and let's put it somewhere there for now and we could just cut this out here so we'd have something like there control and minus that's using ball tool but I don't know it just looks a little bit dull and I think we can do better than that so what I'm going to do is come into edge mode now just before I do this we've scaled this but we've scaled everything equally so we don't really need to apply the scale. If I just press N and come up to the item information, you can see the scale is all the same. So it won't cause any problems with the bevel. But just for simplicity's sake, I do have a tendency to control an A anyway and apply the scale just so that's back to one. Just for any distances that we might be using on this, it's going to be easier and correct in inverted commas. So I'm going to go into edge mode, select that edge, and we could just control and B and bevel this. But I don't know how exactly I want to fill around with this shape. So what I'm actually going to do is press Q, go to mark and press control click and it's going to make a bevel. And then what I can do is we can see the amount of segments it's got. If I move left or right, it changes the size of that. So I'm going to up the segments to somewhere like 16, probably should be okay. And then I can make this as big or small as I want. Let's maybe up that to 32 so it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to go to about there. Now, the reason I'm using a bevel with hard op, and this just creates a bevel modifier only affecting one selected edge, which is confined by a vertex group that hard ops has automatically made. What this allows me to do is, if I want to change this around, one, I can do, I can change the size of the bevel really easily, I can change the segments, but I can also, if I go into vertex mode, and then shift and Z for X-ray, if I decide I don't want this as extreme as that, I can always move that down, and then we get a much more gradual change in angle. And that's because, as a modifier, this is just working as I go. If I undo this, and then do this with a standard bevel, and then I decide I want to change this, you can see it does nothing to the bevel. It just makes a mess. So this is a really nice tool to be able to do that. So this is just a really nice tool to give you that extra level of control. So let's select those, control and minus, and then I'm just going to, do I want to mirror this or mirror the cutter? I think I'm going to mirror the cutter. So select this, shift select thing that we want to mirror, alt and X, and then we can just click here to mirror that across. 
And we can see already this is making a much more interesting shape for our piston. And we might decide to move this up or down later. I'll have a think about that as it comes. And then I'm going to shift and A mesh, bring in another cube so I know that it's centered. That's S to scale that down. S and then Z to scale that up on the Z axis. It's probably a bit much, but it doesn't really make a difference at this point. And then S and X to scale it on the X axis. And then we can do the same of booleaning this out. But again, I think I want this to have a nice round edge. But once again, I want to play around with it. So I'm going to go into edge mode, select those two edges, and then we're going to do the same trick, except for this is not going to work as nicely. If I go to Q, oh, let's apply the scale first. If I go Q and then control click on mark, we get that bevel. But now, even though I haven't selected this edge, it's working on that edge. Now, let's explain why that's happening. If we come over to here and have a look at the bevel, you'll notice that this is using a vertex group, which means it's, well, working off the vertices that are selected. And that works fine, except for here. What this means, if I look at vertex mode, is this is effectively selecting this vertex, and it's doing it to this vertex as well. What this means is by selecting this edge here, we're telling it to work off this vertex and this vertex. And if we select both of these edges, then that's now saying to work on this edge, so this vertex here, and this vertex here, but it's also saying to work on this vertex and this vertex, and that means that not only is it gonna work off this edge, but it's also going to do it to this edge and that edge as well, because it's confined by two selected vertices. So there's several ways around this. First is we could just, if I come back out of isolation mode, we could just do it to this one edge. So I could just do that there. And then I can mirror this across and it will have the same effect. Come into object mode, Alt and X, and then mirror that across and we've got that working. So that's one way of doing it. Other way of doing it is if I select both of these edges, Q, Control click on Mark, and then if I press H, we can see there's this option to change the limit method from vertex group to something else. So if I press L, it'll change it to no limit method, then it'll change it to angle, and then it'll change it to weight. But this doesn't work by itself, but it, well, it is working, but nothing's got a weight at this point. So what I'm gonna do is just up my segments, let's say 16, and click there so it's been done. And we can see we've got this bevel working off weight, but we haven't added a weight to anything. If I just keep those edges selected, Q and then click on mark, that adds a weight to these edges and I can change the amount. So now we've got something that looks a bit better. Now, if this doesn't work for you, it means that you've not got your hard ops set up so that when you mark an edge, it gives it a bevel weight. So let's quickly talk about how to do that. So if you do need to fix this, if we come to the top here, this is our hard op settings and it's got a lot of different menus on it and it shows you some of the basic things you can do. If we come to this helper option here, if you come down, it's got this sharpening option and it says that when you sharpen stuff at the moment, it adds a crease, a B weight, that's the bit we need, and a sharp, it's not adding a seam. We can set this so it adds seams, which are also useful for other things, but sometimes you don't want them if you're gonna be using UV unwrapping. But as long as that B weight is on, this will work nicely. The other thing that's interesting about this is if I come to the front view and start fiddling around with this, if we come to geometry, first thing we can do is click clamp overlap so that they're not gonna overlap. So you've got a limit to how far you can go. I'd always do a little bit less than that because otherwise you get these overlapping vertices on the point where they join together. But the other thing that we've got, which is important, is this profile setting. And at the moment you'll notice even though I've got this pretty heavily beveled, it's not going all the way to the middle. And that's because of this profile shape. And at the moment it's set at 0 0.7. If you change it to 0 0.5, this will create effectively a perfect curve. So I'll generally change that to 0 0.5. Now, again, this gives us the benefit of being able to fiddle around with this to make some changes. We might decide that actually I want this to be much less, or I might only want this to have one segment with less, so it's a chamfer. It's entirely up to you, but with these rounded edges on the side, I think keeping it round is gonna look nice and I want it coming mostly to the middle. So this would be where our section that's from the other object this is being connected to would be. And then go into object mode, shift click here, control and minus, and we've got our Boolean. We can still G and Z this up and down if we decide we want to change where it is. So having had a look at this, I think I want to G and Y that out a little bit further so there's a little bit more thickness to that. That means that I'm gonna G and Z that up. So it's looking a little bit more level and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. 
Then we're gonna to want to add in where our pivot point's gonna be, where the rod that goes through and connects this to our other object is, but it's gonna pivot around. So Shift and A, Mesh, and let's bring the cylinder. Let's put that down to 64. And let's keep it as it is. R and X, turn that 90. G and Z that up, and then let's scale that up to somewhere. There would probably be good. So let's do that. And then I'm just gonna G and Y that off to the side. And we're just gonna make a nice and neat little indent for where this is gonna be. Let's control and A, apply the scale. And before we do anything, I'm gonna shift an S and I'm gonna bring my cursor to this object. So as I bring other cylinders in, it will go to the same place. Let's control and minus. And once again, Alt and X and mirror that over to the other side. Let's H ties those. And then let's do our cutter that goes all the way through. So mesh, bring in another cylinder, RX90, and then let's go with somewhere around there, seems about right. And then S, Z and Z, all the way through, and then control and minus, and then H to hide it. So that looks pretty nice, gives a little bit of interest. And if we decide that we want to have this so that it's sealed off, either side we can add something in there. So I'm just going to bring in a quad sphere. Let's up the subdivisions to, let's say six, so it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna shade it flat and then go to vertex. And then what I wanna do is select all of the vertices that aren't directly in line with the center. Oops, missed one there and there. And then let's delete those. This is probably a bit excessive on the vertices, but oh well. And then I'm gonna F to fill that. And then we've got our object here. And then we can G and Y that over to the correct place. S to scale it down. And we can either leave that as perfectly round or actually find it quite interesting to S and Y and bring that in. So it's got this sort of more flat rounding, if that makes sense. Either way, I quite like that. I think it looks quite interesting. And then we'd have our piston bar that would go through the center here. In fact, I'll just bring that in so we can see it. So that'd be something like there. So we've got a pretty nice piston here. It's a little bit more interesting than the standard by having these curved edges. But we can do this to stand out a little bit more and to make it a bit of a nicer visual experience. I'm gonna shift an S and I'm gonna bring my cursor back to my origin and let's bring in another quad sphere. And let's G and Z that down to somewhere around here. So we'll make the ball joint for the end and we're gonna use another tool. This time, one from Hard Ops and it's one that's really fun. Right, let's shade this flat. I might have got a bit excessive with this. In fact, I'm gonna control an A and then bring in another quad sphere. I'm gonna turn that subdivision down to five and then let's G and Z that down and let's shade that flat again. This is a little better. So I'm gonna scale that up to about here to be the ball joint at the end of the piston. And what I was looking for here was I want these edges. I'm not sure how clearly this is gonna come up. So let me just get that. I want these breaks between it to be approximately the same thickness as those. And we're fairly close, it's not perfect, but it will do, and that's what we're gonna be doing next. Now, what we're gonna do is Control and Plus to Boolean these together, H to hide it, and then I'm gonna press Q, Q, and Smart Apply, which is nice and quick to do with hard ops. I'm gonna undo that quickly. What I've done is bring Smart Apply, which is normally in the Operations Smart Apply, I've right clicked it and added that to my favorites, which is now set to Q. And because the hard ops menu is Q, I just press Q, Q and enter and it does it. And if you use a lot of Booleans or modifiers, it really speeds up your workflow. So what I want to do now is I want to add a nice curving between these two objects. I don't want this to be as harsh. You could leave it as harsh as this if you wanted to, but I like it to have a little bit more flow to it. Now, if I go into edge mode, firstly, Trying to select all of these edges here would be an absolute nightmare because you've got all of these breaks. And if you press Alt and click, it gets very confused. It doesn't know what it's doing. But luckily for us, Mesh Machine can sort this for us. Now, there's several ways of doing this. First, you click on the edge, click Y for the Machine Tools menu, and then you go to Select and then L Select. And it selects everything that Machine Tools somehow recognizes as being the joins for the Boolean. I don't know how, some sort of black, evil magic that is absolutely fantastic. The other way of doing it is you can click once, then hold Alt and then click again, and it will do the same loop select. Then we're gonna use a tool which is actually an experimental feature. If we go to Edit, Preferences, come to our add-ons, look at Mesh Machine, and then come here and go all the way to the bottom, we want to click this, use experimental features, put that to true. It does say at your own risk because it may have errors that come up with it. It just basically gives you a couple of options, including if I press Y, 
the amazing offset cut feature. Now, what this does is effectively it cuts through everything and puts these lines in place. Now, you'll notice that this has done it horribly because it's done it quite small there and quite large there. And that is because of our old favorite. If I come over here, you can see that our scale has been set to different values on the Z axis. So control and A, apply the scale, come back into edge mode, and then we'll solve that. Now, if I go to offset cut, it's equal. So what are the important bits for this? Firstly, I'm not sure I know every single thing that this does. I always turn that to exact and seem to get better results from it. So I would suggest you do that. Your width controls how wide this is going to be sort of breaking through all of these different edges that otherwise would get in the way of your bevels and screw everything up. So I'm gonna put that uh, somewhere around there, I think maybe a little bit more to make it a bit smoother. And then the other ones that you want to know is your factor basically tries to change the amount of these edges that it puts in. And I generally try to match these as closely as possible to what's going on above. Uh, you can do more, of course, you could do something like that, but I generally want to have it so it's relatively close. Seems to be my preferred method of this. Uh, I seem to get better results. And that's why I was trying to make sure that the widths between these lines were the same as the widths between these lines, because then now this will match on both sides. And now that we've done that, I can just press Control and B, and it will very nicely allow me to bevel. I will press C, so I've got clamp overlap enabled, and I'm gonna up that to, let's say, 32 to make it nice and smooth again, and click there, and then we've got this nice, smooth curve which is not gonna have any problems when we're coming to 3D print this. Really, really nice feature. And it just makes for a better looking object. Now we're also gonna use that here because I don't like this. I think it looks a little bit boring with these flat edges. So if I go to edge mode, oops, we're gonna have to apply these first. So QQ, enter to smart apply with that shortcut we've set up. And I'm gonna click there, press alt and then click again. And we've got this nice smooth selection, which is easy to deal with. And then we're gonna bevel this as well. Now what I'm gonna to try to do is bevel these two at the top at the same time and down the other side, but we'll just mirror that so it's nice and easy. So Y, offset cut, and that's probably a bit much. Let's go to 0 0.1 and see what that looks like. And you'll notice it's having some problems. It's having some problems for a number of reasons. And let's go through those reasons. The first is this edge here is causing a problem. If I go to vertex mode, you can see that nice and clearly. So we probably want to change that and any of these angled points that come off like this are always a pain, let's put it that way. Now to sort this out, what this is trying to do is trying to have these edges so that they are perfectly connected or so that they're connected to this boolean in the center. And well, we need that in Blender, it has to use those, but what we're gonna do is try to change it so it's not at this awkward angle. So what I'm gonna do is go into vertex mode, select one of them, and then I'm just gonna press K to knife, click and then I want this going along the x-axis so I'm going to click x come to the edge click and then hit enter so now that got that going along there I can come to edge mode control and x that to dissolve it and then I'm just going to while in object mode press alt x and this brings up my symmetrize options with machine tools machine tools is the free thing that you can get that gives me the pie menus whereas mesh machine is the paid for one which just allows us to do the cool beveling and other things to do with boolean cleanup and I'm just gonna drag to the side and now we've got that sorted. And then all I can do is go into edge mode, click, alt click to have all of that selected. And then we'll just do those and we'll just symmetrize again in a bit. So Y, offset cut, and this still is having some problems. So we'll notice it's got some issues here. So how are we gonna solve that? Well, actually it's not that bad. All we need to do is go into edge, click, alt click. And what we're gonna do is we're only gonna do this to this portion. So Y, offset cut, go here. Let's put up this factor. That's definitely not gonna be great. So we want that nice and smooth. And we've still got a slight problem here, but we can fix that ourselves. And that's sort of the thing with these experimental features. They're not always gonna work perfectly. So confirm that, go into vertex mode. I'm just gonna select that, that, and that, and press one. That's using machine tools, smart vert feature. If you don't want to do that or you don't have that, you can just click M and then at last. And then we've got this working. So we've now got this there so we can bevel. What I'm gonna do is Alt and X and symmetrize that to the other side to fix that problem there. And then I'm going to go into edge mode, click, Alt click, select there, there, and there. 
and then I can do the same on the other side and control and B to bevel and then let's bring that down to one so we've got this nice chamfer it's gonna look interesting on that edge could that have been smoother yes it can okay let's try that again so Y offset cut let's put up that resample much higher so it's a lot smoother again I should have probably been matching this to that inner shape a bit better and then vertex mode do the same cleanup alt x there and alt x to the other side there as well so you probably didn't need to do that till later edge mode click alt click and then there 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 and those two and then control and b again there we go much better and i hope you agree that looks way smarter by having that there it looks really interesting and then we need to do the same on the other side. So just alternate to either mirror it or we can go into edit mode, alternates and symmetrize. And we've got that sorted. And as I say, I think that looks way cooler. And then finally, we can do exactly the same thing here. Go into edge mode, click, alt click, Y and then offset cut and then select, select, select and select and control and B all the way out. And then we've got that there. Alt X and symmetrize that to the other side. And I hope you'll agree that is a way more interesting looking piston than standard. Oh, maybe I want to make those a little bit bigger actually. Mm, yeah, let's exaggerate those slightly. So actually I think I want that a little bit larger and a little bit more exaggerated. So I'm just gonna do that and fiddle around with that. Just changing that to be about twice the size. So you can see how quickly this is to work through using or getting used to those shortcut menus is really key to making blender as efficient as possible it's not something you have to do but having just everything or most things in a q menu for hard ops a y menu for mesh machine and then things like control and b to bevel and things like that it really does speed up your life and it's just something that you probably will get used to slowly if you're starting out but as you get further and further through using blender it becomes easier and easier to deal with I should quickly add that although this has been sped up, the whole process of doing this actually took just under two minutes. So pretty good considering the amount that's going into it. I do think actually I want all of this to be slightly raised up. It just looks a little off compared to the other parts. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, that looks better from this angle. So there we go. So that's my piston. Obviously I'd have my second part that comes from my machine coming in somewhere to here and connecting sort of in there but for the piston this is pretty much done we've still got this object being separate so I can change where that is and yeah we're pretty good to go so hopefully that's been an interesting look into a little bit of machine tools but mostly hard ops and mesh machine and some of the things you can do to make your life much easier if you use these as tools. Obviously they are paid for add-ons. There is an affiliate link for hard ops in the description if you're looking at getting that and you do want to support the channel. It costs you no extra and it does put a little bit of money to help support the channel. So thank you if you used to click that. I don't have one for Mesh Machine. Uh, I did ask, they never really got back to me, but I think that's probably because they're busy working on a lot of things like these add-ons to make them as good as possible. And it's a fantastic feature, so that's no reason not to get it. I use it and I think it's great. As always, if you've got any questions, do feel free to ask in the comment section. If you found the video useful, please do hit like. And if you want to see some more videos, head on over to the Patreon where we're a week ahead and you get all these videos ad-free as well as other great content. Have a great day, guys.